What's up, guys? What's going on? It's your boy, Paul. This is Pauline Theology. I'm back. We're doing our daily devotional, man. We're going through Judges. And right now, we've hit the stride in the Gideon cycle. So what's next, man? What is next? First, we talk about what's happened in the story. Second, we talk about who God is in this, what characteristics are there. Third, we talk about what it says about us as human beings, people. And then fourth, we're trying to apply it to our lives. So let's dive in. We're on Judges chapter 6, verse 25. A little bit of intro so that we know where we're at. Um, Gideon has just uh, uh, met with the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord told him that God was going to be with him. And uh, he recognized it was God, and then he disappeared. He floated up on the flame that went to heaven, man. And Gideon was tripping. He was like, oh, that's God. I'm going to die. But God said, fear not, man. He's like, you won't die. And so it says... 6.25 is where we start. It says, That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull and the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the asterisk that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the asterisk that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. And when the men of the town arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broke down, and the asterisk beside it was cut down, and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. And they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And after they had searched and inquired, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the town said to Joash, Bring out your son that he may die. For he has broken down the altar of Baal and cut down the asterisk beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal or will you save him? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is God, let him contend for himself because his altar has been broken down. Therefore, on that day, Gideon was called Jerubbaal. Because that is to say, let Baal contend against him because he broke down his altar. So, man, we got what happened. Well, it looks like after God had sent this message to Gideon, he told Gideon to go and do something, which is to cut down the asterisk and the and the Baal, the, the, um, the, the altars where the gods are, and build a new altar and uh, offer an offering to the true God. Yahweh. And so Gideon did it. But it gives a little detail because the author of uh, Judges wants to recognize that, yeah, Gideon's a bit of a scaredy cat. He's scared and um, afraid. And that is a characteristic that we have to recognize in Gideon is that he's afraid. He's scared of his own shadow. And so he goes and does it, though, because the Lord says to do it, but he does it at night. And then in the morning, after all of that had been done, the people of the city are like, what happened? They search, they talk, they inquire, do an investigation. They find out it was Gideon who did it. And they go to Gideon's dad and they're like, you better get, tell your son to get up out of here, man. We finna kill him because he tore down our altar. And his dad, Joash, is like, bro, if, uh, if, if, if Baal is God, can't he contend for himself? Like, can he stand up for himself? Can he defend himself? He's like, whoever defends Baal is going to die by the morning, man. And so they let him go. Uh, the people of uh, the city was like, all right, that's cool. But they changed his name to Jerubbaal, which means that let Baal contend against him, or it can also be he who contend against Baal. So it's like a, a, a thing where Gideon now in his name is represented as being kind of a brave dude, kind of a strong dude. So what can we see about God? Well, what we can know about God in this uh, um, account is that God can contend for himself. He is a strong and powerful God. I think a quote from Charles H. Spurgeon, which is a Baptist preacher from uh, a long time ago. I'm not sure, 1900 something. I can't recall at this present moment. But anyway, he said that, uh, that God is like a lion and he can defend himself. We don't have to defend his word. And that is what the scripture is saying. 
that God is like a lion or any God who is a real God is like a lion and can defend themselves. But there is no other God. That's why Baal can't contend for himself. Baal can't do anything for himself because he is not real. He is not true. He is not authentic. What can we see about man in this? Well, I think uh, we can see that we ourselves are weak, but in our weaknesses, we can still live abundantly great lives or be strong or be brave or be courageous through God. See, that's what happened to Gideon, man. He, he's a Brady cat, but he did it anyway because he knew that God was with him. We saw that earlier. It says, for I will be with you. And then uh, what can we take from this? Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Let me back back up. Joash, too, bro. His daddy taking care of him, man. That's a relationship, a father-son relationship. And Joash, man, obviously he's part of this thing with the, the Baal and all that stuff because it's on his land. But we see that when his son steps up to the plate, Joash steps up, too. And so I think uh, we follow people who especially when they don't seem to be something and then turn in, turn out to be something. But we, we follow the strong. And God calls people to be strong so that we may follow them. And then uh, finally, what, how can we learn from this? What, what application can we apply to our lives from this? Well, I think that uh, we trust in Jesus. Big thing right there. Because if God says to do something... He'll allow it to happen. He's going to move it into place so that it will occur. No matter what, man, because he says he's going to do it, and won't he do it? So let's praise God in that fact, man. And so if God's calling you to do something today, and you feel like you ain't able to, man, take the steps to do it, because God has said you're going to do it, and he will achieve it through you. Matter of fact, he'll achieve it through you because you know you can't do it. So then when it happens, it will be for his glory alone. Take that, and I'll take it too, because we all need it. I'll see y'all guys in the next one.